Following a poor image of banking services in the public side, South Africa introduced the Office of the Ombudsman for Banking Services in year 2000 to bring banking in line with international best practice. Joining us now on Banking Services in South Africa ahead of the annual report to be released later on today is the Banking Ombudsman Advocate Clive Pillay. Advocate Pillay, thank you very much for coming through. Um, what can we expect in terms of key issues to come out of uh, the report today? Some of the key issues will be the recurring um, problems we have with uh, mortgage finance, uh, internet banking, and ATM scams. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that uh, banks in South Africa are providing consumers a fair service? Because if you ask the average man on the street, they'd say no. Uh, you know, we, we get over 3,000 complaints a year. And that doesn't take into account the complaints that the banks deal with themselves. So that's the first point. And in this, uh, the second point is in the transactional space, so to speak, such as internet banking complaints, uh, uh, debit order complaints, check deposit complaints, in that space, over the past year, we have held approximately 67% of those complaints in favor of the consumer. So those two factors would tend to suggest to me that with regards to customer treatment and, and, and service, right. banks have got a long way to go still. Okay, now we've just been looking at banks' earnings and we know that they probably bore the brunt largely for the financial crisis and they've suffered the most. Uh, and it seems to be how they want to recover costs is through bank fees because they just systematically keep on increasing and the transactional cost for the everyday consumer is uh, getting to be ridiculous. Well, look, there's no, there's no question that interest from, for example, credit agreements are down. There's no question that the volumes of transactional transactions such as uh, cash withdrawals and uh, uh, deposits are down. Uh, but having said that, my mandate does not extend to challenging a bank's commercial decision. So whether a bank decides to increase fees and to what extent, mm -hmm. that's a commercial decision. Mm -hmm. uh, but clearly, if, if there's any maladministration, uh, in the assessment or the application of those fees right. and then I would be able to intervene. Okay, continuing on this tack, we know the banks have started or some banks have started to reintroduce 100% home loans in a country where Chris was saying earlier on people are um, indebted something like 70% of their disposable income services debt. We've got a National Credit Act to try to regulate unscrupulous lending but in the context of just what's happened internationally with mortgages wouldn't you be uh, imploring banks to be a bit more cautious? Well, I think we mustn't be misled by the 100% loans. The banks are applying that very, very circumspectly. And there's, so there's no danger of, um, of a transgression of the National Credit Act. And there's no danger of consumers... Um, okay being exposed to reckless lending. Okay. Now, internationally, Goldman Sachs is in the headlines uh, for all sorts of wrong reasons. But the basic issue here is proprietary banking. And we know that merchant banks in South Africa as well have been called on this one uh, in the height of the recession as well. In the ambit of your work, what can you do about private banking and uh, proprietary banking? You know, we, we're not involved in, 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 in uh, proprietary banking as such safe to say any maladministration we would be able to get involved but as you know uh, proprietary trading is a hot topic at the moment uh, there's talk of, of of segregating bank activities into traditional banking and proprietary trading uh, so i guess the the, the 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 answer to that is and i understand from south african banks that they don't engage in proprietary trading to any appreciable extent or degree um, but, but it's worth looking at increased uh, capital ratios and liquidity right. 
Mm. Okay, Chris, just your opinion on this one. The IMF and G20 nations are looking at a bank tax, and if this international bank tax were to be introduced to try to recover all the monies that have been uh, loaned out due to these uh, bailout packages, South Africa's big four banks would also be exposed and their earnings affected by about 10% losses in terms of paying these taxes. E exactly. So South African banks have to actually help out bail out U US and UK governments uh, and Dutch governments and, and the like um, for a problem that they didn't create. They didn't need bailouts. Our banking system was never broken. Mm. Um, and um, I, I would find that a travesty. And I see that South Africa is resisting it. I think rightly so. I think it's an opportunity for South right. Africa to actually create a more sensible banking environment because the US, we don't need to follow the US right. stupidity. Okay, do you have an opinion on that one? Yes, I, 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 uh, to my understanding, the South African banks have refused to pay that tax. And, and uh, Chris says South African banks are well managed and well regulated. And so to expect South African banks to pay a tax for a problem not of their making would be tantamount to penalizing uh, good conduct. So yeah. I, I agree, it's, it's untenable. Okay, thank mm. you very much, Advocate Clark Pillay, the bank ombudsman who will be uh, re uh, releasing <laughs> a report on banking later on today.